This young lady's amassed more than 10 million followers on YouTube, shooting silly videos with her friends. Now Lisa Guerrero reports some of those now former friends and their parents are suing. She would like run around and say sexual things to you. I feel like my childhood got ruined. Being told to say things, do things, wear things. Tiffany would always tell me to go up into Piper's closet and get something that's more tight. Other and kids who might think this is normal, it's not. Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's Ivan Steph and you guys, this video is long overdue, but the time has finally come. Social media exploitation is nothing new. We've seen tons of parents using their children to generate income. We got the case of Danielle Cohn and all the controversy involving her age, dating boys a lot older than her, and a long list of offensive things that she's done. We got the case of Beep Bop and BB, where BB fueled a conspiracy theory about Beep Bop, her own daughter, being kidnapped. All is a scheme to generate millions of followers and gain a profit thanks to everyone falling for her plan. And then we got Piper Raquel, who's an influencer with over 11 million subscribers on YouTube and 11 million followers on TikTok. She typically makes prank and challenge videos, some of them being we became a Disney princess for a day and we live like a Barbie for a day. Those videos are sweet and innocent. No harm there, just kids being kids and having fun. But then you got videos like no touching for 24 hours challenge. I have been cheating on my boyfriend. Oh my God, a baby. Maybe it's positive. These are just some of the many videos using suggestive titles and thumbnails hinting at something else. In these two videos, the pregnancy was actually about her mom, Tiffany, who the lawsuit is about. But when your thumbnail looks like this with that title, you're trying to make it look like the child is the one who's pregnant, so people click on your video and give you views. There's been many more videos either deleted or edited, which are way worse, such as calling my boyfriend daddy to see how he reacts, stuffing my bra to see if my boyfriend notices, for sleepover with my boyfriend, got caught doing this. If you say I love you, you have to remove a layer of clothing. If you're in your 20s and are an adult making these videos, sure, go ahead. But for someone around 12 years old, it's highly inappropriate, especially for her mom to be the one telling her how to pose. And not only that, but back in 2022, YouTube demonetized the Piper Raquel channel. According to Insider, YouTube said we have indefinitely suspended monetization on Piper Raquel's channel for violating our creative responsibility policy by engaging in off-platform behavior that harms the YouTube community and have removed them from the YouTube Partner Program. Now, what are these off-platform behaviors that are so bad that it resulted in YouTube demonetizing their channel? Well, let's get into it. On January 11th, the parents on behalf of 11 former members of Piper's old squad called Piper Squad filed a lawsuit against her mom, Tiffany Raquel. And in this lawsuit, the kids accused Tiffany of physical, emotional, verbal, and S abuse, as well as financial exploitation. Now this lawsuit didn't quite come to a complete shock for everyone because people have been worried about Piper and the whole Piper Squad for a long time now. A few months before the lawsuit was filed, singer Pink tweeted out, how many kids like Piper Raquel are being exploited by their parents? And at what point do the rest of us say, this isn't okay for a 13 year old to be posing in a bikini while her mother takes the photo. Now personally, I don't care if a teenager is in a bikini at the beach, like that is a natural thing. I'm not trying to criminalize a female body. But the problem for a lot of people is wearing a bikini, doing all these inappropriate poses and sticking your tongue out while your own mother who relies on you for income takes the photo. As you're gonna see in the discussion of this lawsuit, there's a difference between choosing to wear something and being forced to wear something. And Tiffany Raquel, well, she's being accused of forcing these kids to do some really disgusting things. So without further ado, I got a PDF of the lawsuit, but because it's 147 pages long, I'm not gonna explain everything, but I will give you a big taste of what this lawsuit is about and what these children are accusing Tiffany Raquel of doing to them. Piper's mom is being sued by multiple children, formerly part of the Piper squad, including Sawyer, Don Lad, Aiden, Connor, Hayden, Walker, Sophia, Corinne, Simone, Claire, and Claire's sister, Reese. And keep in mind that they are cousins with Piper, so to be suing your own family member, it's gotta be bad. Now, the defendants of this case are Tiffany Raquel and Hunter Hill, who is a cameraman and known as the editor. And fun fact, Hunter was known as Piper's older brother, but later on, it was revealed that Hunter was dating Piper's mom. Yeah, that's, um, like, I know they're not actually blood related, but to be calling him that and I'll be dating him, uh, uh, this is weird. So from 2017 to 2020, the kids appeared in hundreds of Piper Raquel's videos where they can be seen smiling, laughing, and appearing to have a good time. But behind the scenes, they were suffering from physical, verbal, emotional, and sometimes even S abuse, all at the hands of Tiffany Raquel. Now what these kids are asking for is $2 million each, totaling $22 million. That is a lot of money. 
That is equivalent to roughly 100 of these Lamborghinis, over 200 school buses, or one of these homes in Toronto. Now, a lot of people are finding it strange that these kids are asking for money, considering that they're accusing Tiffany of abuse. And because of this, some people think that these kids are just trying to get some money and attention. Tiffany has rejected these claims and originally did countersue these children for $30 million, claiming that the mother of the children were working together to get money by making up lies about sexual abuse. But shortly later, she dropped the countersuit completely. So the reason that they're asking for money is because after they left Piper Squad, their views on their own channels dropped like crazy. And they're accusing Tiffany and Hunter of sabotaging their channels, which resulted in them losing out on a lot of money. And the $2 million is said to be what their lost revenue would have been. Here's a screenshot of Sawyer's YouTube dashboard. And as you can see, his views dropped significantly after leaving the Piper Squad. And his subscriber count went from gaining about 80,000 per month when he was part of Piper Squad to about 3,000 per month after he left the squad. And he wasn't the only one whose views went crashing down. Here's a screenshot of Dan Lad's dashboard, Aiden's dashboard, Claire's dashboard, and the list goes on. So there's basically two sides to this lawsuit. One of them being the whole viewership drop and revenue loss. But the other, which I find to be the more important one, is the allegations of abuse. So what exactly is Tiffany Beak accused of doing to these kids that is considered abuse? Well, let's take a look. In the section titled, Miss Smith's Grossly Inappropriate, Offensive, and Abusive Treatment of Plaintiffs, we got some pretty nasty stuff. During a filming session, Tiffany was referring to another squad member when she told Sophia, I wonder since this squad member has freckles, whether he has a bunch of freckles on his dick. And apparently the children would often hear Tiffany referring to another squad member's baby carrot, if you know what I mean, as Dwayne the Rock Hard Johnson. Tiffany even asked Hayden whether his balls have dropped yet and asked how long his pepper red is. She's being accused of saying so many more disgusting things like shaming one girl's chest and talking about plastic toys that you use in the bedroom. This is just weird, man. Like, I ain't gonna lie, Dwayne the Rock Hard Johnson, that's funny to say if it's your friend who is your age. But a 40 year old woman saying this to young teenagers is just sus. But as bad as all this sounds, this isn't even close to the worst of it. Apparently Sophia witnessed Tiffany grabbing Piper's face and making out with her in an attempt to teach her how to kiss. Apparently Tiffany would slap several of the children's butts and even attempt to sometimes succeeding in sticking a finger up their dumpster. And we got even more accusations such as encouraging the children to have oral S with each other. She would give S explicit instructions how to act with one another where revealing clothing so girls can show off more of their body and the boys can show off their bulges. And the next one I want to share with y'all is really, really, really weird because Tiffany and Kareen went to a post office where Tiffany mailed some of Piper's training bras and underwear because quote unquote, old men like to smell this stuff. This is just messed up. Like it's bad. It is really bad. When I first heard of the news, I didn't expect it to be this bad. The fact that the videos on Piper's channel made the kids seem like they're having a great time, but then all of this goes on behind the scenes. It's scary. Honestly, I kind of picture Tiffany growing up to be that old lady from The Visit. You know that one scene where the lady is running around the house at night? Well, Tiffany became kind of close to doing that because apparently she had an alter ego named Lenny the Dead Cat where she would chase the kids around her house and shout some graphic phrases like, I'm going to F you up the ass. I'm going to touch you in your sleep. And yeah, little boy, little girl, let's make out, let's kiss. I have so many questions. How did this go on for so long? Like, where were the parents in this? Again, these are just allegations. A trial for this lawsuit haven't started yet, but I can kind of understand why it might've been so hard for these children to come out years later and reveal this. Piper and her mom were business partners with these kids, but also so much more than that, they were friends who had a genuine connection and would make videos together, laughing, smiling, you know, having a good time. But then there were things going on behind the scenes which were just living nightmare but it was probably really hard for these kids because on one end you're making a lot of money getting a lot of fame and you're hanging out with friends having a good time but then on the other end down there you got Tiffany Raquel <laughs> Now, regarding the sabotaging that they're accusing Tiffany of doing, at first, I didn't understand how Tiffany could actually hurt their channels until I read into the lawsuit. Apparently, Tiffany and Hunter would use bots to quickly add and remove subscribers from the kids' YouTube channels, which affects the algorithm. They would falsely flag content as inappropriate, which leads videos to being restricted, and even put their videos onto adult websites. And Hunter openly bragged about knowing someone who works for YouTube named Alex that would help keep Piper's views high by lifting restrictions while placing restrictions on videos made by other kids. These allegations allegations, it's a lot. Like, I didn't even read you guys half a bit, but I think you get the gist of it. <laughs> that was intense. Not as intense as Tiffany, though. If Tiffany were to sneeze, I imagine it would sound something like this. <laughs> These allegations, it's a lot. Like, I haven't even read you guys half of what is in this lawsuit, and 
You guys already get the gist of it, and this is just the beginning. The trial was originally set to begin on April 17, but got pushed all the way down on November 6. And this trial was set to be seen in front of a jury. More information has slowly been coming out. Back in February, some of the former members in an interview with Inside Edition. I feel like it's important to come forward because other kids who might think this is normal. She would like run around and say sexual things to you. Were you ever asked to pose provocatively or to wear things you were uncomfortable wearing? Oh yeah, Tiffany would always tell me to go up into Piper's closet and get something that's more tight and revealing. Being overly sexualized at a young age and um, being told to say things, do things, wear things um, for the appeal of YouTube and for people to click on it more, mm -hmm. which is just absolutely Disgusting. And unfortunately, Tiffany has used the bodies of these children to get more money for herself. Now, keep in mind, this is a civil case, meaning that no criminal charges are being laid. But in the future, who knows? Maybe this could change. Influencer exploitation is becoming a growing issue, with Gen Z being the first generation born into social media. And over the next decade, having kids, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this. As I mentioned, we got Danielle Cohn and Beep Up and BB, but we've also got Jenny Popach, the Ace family, and all of those other family channels. I remember two years ago, Jordan Cheyenne coached her son across for a video about their sick dog. Come here, come closer for the video, come closer. Come closer! Put your head right here, come closer. Act like you're crying, really quick. I am crying. Go like this. No, Mom, I'm actually seriously crying. No, I know, but go like this. Go like this, put one hand up, go like this. Ah. No, go like this. Ah. Put your hand like, let them see your mouth. Look at the camera, look at the camera. <laughs> Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's over, it's over, it's over. But to my knowledge, something new is happening because I don't think we've ever had these types of parents actually being sued. The case between former Piper Squad members against Tiffany Raquel is big because it's gonna serve as a precedent or an example for future channels. In the years to come, this case is gonna be used as an example to look at the dangers of social media and internet exploitation. Anyways though, I wanna know your thoughts on this trial and all of the nasty things that Tiffany's being accused of doing. If you did enjoy watching this and were both educated and entertained, please consider leaving a like on this video and be sure to subscribe because the trial is set to take place on November 6th and from now until then I will be covering all the updates. But anyway that's officially gonna do it so until next time it's been Ivan Staff. Peace.